what's up so today I'm outside doing a video because uh, I got tired of sitting in the house and uh, I'm going to talk about two movies that I watched recently over the past two weekends one is sorry to bother you which came out a few years back I think 2018 and the other movie is little women which I think came out last year uh, and it wasn't until watching Little Women that I, I thought about doing this comparison just because uh, there's such a stark contrast between my appreciation and maybe even understanding between the two movies. And I'll start with uh, Sorry to Bother You first. So Sorry to Bother You I thought was like really, really great movie. Uh, I liked, I guess, the surrealist aspect of it where there are times where you don't know whether it's real life that's happening or whether it's all in his head, he's just imagining these things. Uh, which I thought was really cool. But I think underneath all that, and this was pretty obvious, but uh, underneath all that was like, this like underlying tone of, I guess, experiences that black people have in America. One with the whole white voice thing, which I thought was very funny, especially coming from Danny Glover, who's like been an actor for a long time. and probably were times in acting roles where he felt like he needed to whiten up his voice in order to get a part. But that's something that I think black people experience com uh, pretty often and there's cars passing. I think black people experience pretty often is you have to kind of de-racialize your voice, especially when you're talking over the phone so that people don't start making assumptions about your race and therefore start making different decisions in how they interact with you. And that's something I've like witnessed firsthand all my life, uh, just listening to people talk over the phone with someone. It's not something I've n ever really done before, uh, but I've also been told that I sound white already, and this is like just my normal speaking voice. I don't, I don't recall ever changing my voice. Uh, I have. It hasn't pointed out to me that I do code switch, which is probably obvious if you know what code switching is, but. Uh, yeah, I do code switch, but overall, like the my tone and inflection and all that stuff is pretty consistent. Uh, but that that was like a cool part of uh, "Sorry to Bother You" that I really appreciated. And then uh, just the idea of like, I think the idea of him like starting at the bottom and like being in the struggle with everyone and then getting elevated to to this position of success where he has to decide: Am I gonna? like continue as part of the struggle or will I try to fight this system from this higher position? I think that's something that uh, maybe black people of status have to deal with is how do they use their position of power in order to aid the efforts of black people and minorities in general who don't have power. And sometimes those black celebrities with status don't inherently or necessarily want to do that but they feel pressure to do it nonetheless and it, I, it, I mean I don't have any status so I can't say but I would imagine it causes some internal struggle for those people that uh, like the black community as a whole probably isn't uh, doesn't really care about because the struggles of the greater the struggles of the I guess the greater population are more important than the internal struggles of an individual uh, and because I did not do any preparation for this video, I'm like blanking out on all the other parts of the movie that I thought were like, uh, oh, another part. Oh, yeah, I just remembered. So there's a scene where he like goes and sorry if you haven't seen it yet, but he gets invited to this party with this really rich guy who basically <clears throat> runs a private prison camp uh, where people work I'm pushing up my glasses. Sorry. Uh, runs this private prison camp and he... Him and one other black people are the only people of color there. And he's like the new toy that everyone's interested in. So the the CEO like invites him to this room where everyone's like kind of sitting and standing in a semicircle. And he's like, okay, come on, tell us some stories like about growing up in the hood. Uh, which is like, that like made me laugh out loud because I can relate to feeling like that. I mean, going to college in Iowa where you're surrounded by a sea of white people, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but uh, many of these people, I think, don't have a lot of personal interactions with black people. And so a lot of their knowledge of black people just comes from media. So rap and movies and uh, what the people that end up making it on the news. So they kind of get this caricature of who a black person in America is. So I was 
not ask questions like that specifically, but I was asked questions that when you think about the question that the person is an asking and when you give them an answer, they'll make a face kind of indicated like, oh, I didn't, I didn't expect that answer. So like telling people that, like someone once asked me like, what's your mom's name? And I was like, my mom's name is Linda. And people, the person, like I could see his face change. And I was like, what do you think her name would be? And he kind of didn't answer, which to me, like tells him to believe he wanted me to say something like Shaniqua or Sharonda or something that is like stereotypically ghetto. Uh, and then there's the part where he like everyone's like, OK, come on, rap for us. I know you can rap, which is like another thing that everyone just assumes every black person can rap, which we can't. And like that exact thing happened to me with this uh, this girl I knew freshman year. Basically, every time she saw me, she would like try and get me to rap for her, which I told her I don't know how to rap. Like it's just I can rap along to things. But like if you just catch me like, hey, Ellie spit a fly rap for me like you're not going to get anything uh so that's just like something that was really annoying that was relatable and then also the idea of i don't know if anyone maybe people did catch this and it was probably meant to be caught but there was a billboard that was pro uh protesting like the entire scheme of that company uh and then someone spray painted graffiti over it and then in the later scene when he's at that party uh the rich guy has that graffiti billboard in his house being displayed as a piece of art, which I think maybe gets into the idea of like the, the commoditization of protests and anger that I think can be seen in like maybe a good example is like Banksy's artwork, which uh, I mean, I haven't really kept up with his latest stuff, but a lot of m much of his older stuff was kind of anti-establishment, kind of like pointed out injustices in the world. And then those things, if they could be, were commodi uh, turned into commodities that could be bought and sold by very wealthy art collectors, which who, those are likely the people who are perpetuating many of the things that his art was trying to protest. So I think that kind of got at that. Uh, yeah, I thought, like, I thought Sorry to Bother You was a great movie overall. And then this past week when we watched Little Women, which uh, after watching, I told Katie, like, I just don't think this movie was intended for me. Uh, and I think it was primarily, I think the tone of the movie just never felt quite right. Uh, I mean, one, I guess just from a film point of view, even though this is supposed to be like set in the late, mid, late 1800s, a lot of their interactions with each other felt like interactions that people would have had in a movie that was set in 2010. Like it, it didn't feel authentic in that way. So I never got really into the time period, but also think part of it is just like maybe because I'm not a woman I don't quite understand like I can understand the the fight that they have about like well across the three older sisters the younger sister didn't really play a part in the struggle but the the sister Joe was like the fiercely independent woman who was like I don't need love I can do this with all my own without a man then you had Amy who was kind of like Joe, like she had this idea that she would be, go on to be this famous artist and love kind of played a, a back seat. I don't think she would have turned it away, but it wasn't a priority. And then you have the older sister, Meg, who didn't really care to have like an independent work life. Like she was completely okay with accepting her position as just being a wife and a homemaker. So Amy is kind of a a cross between Meg and Joe and I guess that makes sense because they're like her influences and maybe a, a bit more of Joe than uh than Meg but that I feel like that conversation that the movie was trying to have with the audience at times got really awkward because that there was times where the two characters would be having dialogue around that conversation and they would often at times I feel like it was like the character would go into a monologue and bait and they weren't like staring into the camera but it felt like they were like sitting in front of you telling you like women should be able to choose what they want they don't have to just be wives which i guess is just bad screenwriting so that's not inherently the movie's fault and i also know that it's based on a book and so i don't know how true to the book they tried to make the screenplay and if the book itself comes off as very monologue -y like that which if it does that's not really my thing i don't like books like that uh, so it was like a really frustrating thing. Uh, and then like, it's, I think the, the book or the movie, I should say, because I don't know the book, the movie I think falls victim to the portrayal 
of feminism as the pursuit of women's rights, but only through the eyes of white women. And I think like it's it's very poignant that this movie is set around the Civil War, which is this time of kind of great racial struggle in our country where we had to have a war asking whether black people can be treated as humans or chattel or, or animal agriculture, which is ridiculous in and of itself. But uh, th just like that being the historical backdrop was when this take when this takes place, I think makes it even harder for me to like accept the accept the the narrative that the movie's trying to put forth and that the idea that women can choose to work if they want to work, which obviously I accept. Uh, so hopefully no one comes in questioning that. But I think it's really funny because obviously women of color, uh, because it's set around the Civil War, black women have been working and been uh, providing income and also caretaking for families for their entire, for our entire existence in this country. Uh, and so I think I, I wish it, the movie at some point would have acknowledged that the complaints that they have are complaints of wealthy white women and not complaints. I mean, poor white women probably had to work to some capacity as well, just so that family had more income. So it, it makes this movie like it, it tries to paint the struggle as something that all women have to deal with. And I'm sure to some degree, all women have to make a choice between being a homemaker and pursuing a career or how they get the best of both worlds for themselves and their families uh, without feeling like judgment from their family and also feeling judgment from society. I accept and understand that. But I think if the movie would have acknowledged the fact that a lot of the conversation that the movie was trying to have with the public, with the viewer, is centered in that more privileged world that they were in. Uh, and something I think the movie never did really well was explain uh, Joe's family's financial situation because they had a nice house. They had a maid that lived in the house. Uh, but Joe was writing writing books and living in New York so that, or writing stories, I should say, because Little Woman was her first book. But she was writing stories and selling them so she could send the money back to her family because they needed it. But I don't know. I feel like if your family has a live-in maid, maybe you should cut that person out first so that you have more money. Um, so like it, they, her family's like financial situation just it was never really clear to me, but I mean, it seems like they were more well-to-do than most people uh, for that time period. So the reason I guess I want to compare these two movies is because one, I saw them very recently in chronological time, uh, but also, I think these movies did have different demographics that they were trying to hit, uh, where I think, sorry to bother you, obviously both of these movies can be viewed by anyone and appreciated by anyone, but I think if you're a black American and you watch Sorry to Bother You, the way you perceive that movie and what you take from it and what you pick up as you watch it may be slightly different than it would be if you were a, not a black person or not a minority. And if you were... Uh, maybe a white woman, the way you perceive little women and the way you appreciate it may be altered by that lens. Uh, so I guess this is kind of a conversation about how your de demographics, who you are as an individual, your gender, your sex, your race, your wealth status, all of those things kind of affect the way you internalize media and what you take from it. And then ultimately how you judge it because if you don't kind of understand some of the 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 underlying messages that aren't made overtly obvious about sorry to bother sorry to bother you and you then maybe like some of the plot points you may be more critical of it because you don't see all the little nuggets that are being dropped in and similarly for little women if you don't fall on that demographic of people who i guess the struggle is about in that movie you may be more critical of it, which uh, I accept that. Maybe that's why I didn't like the movie as much. But that criticism may be driven by the fact that you're just not part of the target audience. Uh, so yeah, those are two movies that the the two movies that I watched most recently, and they, uh, I mean, they they both have their audiences. There's one, uh, sorry to bother you, that I like much more than the other, which is Little Woman. Uh, Little Woman got, I mean, did way better in the box office. Uh, but both of them like really critically, highly critical, critically reviewed movies. Uh, so obviously 
they both have their place within uh, the film world. But yeah, those are just my thoughts. Uh, see, this video has run on kind of long. Definitely plan for this to be under 10 minutes, but those of you who have ever talked to me in person know that I can uh, talk for a long time sometimes. So I'll leave it there. Uh, who knows what the next video will be about, but hopefully it'll be engaging. So uh, yeah, stay good, stay safe, uh, follow guidelines. Please don't inject or drink disinfectant. Uh, despite the recommendation, or maybe not the recommendation, but the appearance of suggestion, a sarcastic suggestion by the president. Uh, but yeah, listen to health professionals. They went to years of schooling to have the expertise that they do. So they should be the authorities in these type of situations. But yeah, that's it. All right, my beer is getting warm now. Peace out, see you next video.